Good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Michael and Wally and Joe's Facebook page as we have evening prayer on this Sunday, the July the 2nd, 2023. Sorry for the little delay, but we are here nevertheless to praise the Lord. We are beginning on page 59 with the opening sentence and then to page 63 and 62 and the pages to follow. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Glory to you on page 64. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. We say together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The office hymn is hymn number 26 in our CPWI hymnal, hymn number 26. The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee all morning hymns ascended. Thy praise shall sanctify our rest. We thank thee that thy church on sleeping while earth rolls onward into light through all the world a watch is keeping and rest not now by day or night. As o'er each continent and island the dawn leads on another day, the voice of prayer is never silent, nor dies the strain of praise away. The sun that bids us rest is waking, our brethren need the western sky, and our by our fresh lips are making thy wondrous doings heard on high. 
So be it, Lord, thy throne shall never like its proud empires pass away. Thy kingdom stands and grows forever till all thy creatures own thy sway. The appointed psalm for this evening's office is Psalm 145, on page 660, 660, Psalm 145. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. This, <clears throat> they shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the need the Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the book of Numbers chapter 21 verses 49 and 21 to 35. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest the miserable Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Then Israel sent messengers to King Sion of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through your land. We will not turn aside into the field or vineyard. We will not drink the water of any well. 
we will go by the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Sion would not allow Israel to pass through his territory. Sion gathered all his people together and went out against Israel to the wilderness. He came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. Israel put him to the sword and took possession of his land from Aaron, from the Aaron to the Jabbok, as far as the Ammonites, for the boundary of the Ammonites was strong. Israel took all these towns, and Israel settled in all the towns of the Ammonites, in Heshbon, and in all the villages. For Heshbon was the city of King Sion of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and captured all his land as far as the Arno. The ballad singers say, say, Come to Heshbon, let it be built. Let the city of Sion be established. For fire came out of Heshbon, flame of the city of Sion. It devoured Ar and Moab and swallowed up the heights. Woe to you, O Moab! You are undone, O people of Chemosh. He has made his sons fugitives and his daughters captives to the Amorite king, Sion. So their prosperity perished from Heshbon to Dibon, and we laid waste until fire spread to Medeba. Thus Israel settled in the land of the Amorites. Moses sent to spy out Jezreel. Jazer, and they captured the villages and dispossessed the Amorites who were there. Then they turned and went up to the road of Bashan. And King Og of Bashan came out against them, he and all his people, to battle at Edri. But the Lord said to Moses, Do yes. My apologies. Moses said, Do not be afraid of him, for I have given him into your hand with all his people and all his land. You shall do to him as you did to King Sion of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon. So they killed him, his sons, and all his people until there was no survivor left, and they took possession of his land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing hymn 750 in, in place of the Magnificat, 750. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord, unnumbered blessings give my spirit, voice tender to me the promise of his word in god my savior shall my heart rejoice tell out my soul the greatness of his name make known his might the deeds his arm has done his mercy show from age to age the same is holy name the lord the mighty one tell out my soul the greatness of his might powers and dominions lay their glory by proud hearts and star burn wills are put to flight the hungry fed the humble lifted high tell out my soul the glories of his word firm is his promise and his mercy sure tell out my soul the greatness of the lord to children's children and forevermore the second lesson in the gospel of matthew chapter 21 beginning to read at verse 23 when he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, 
By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why de then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said to the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he didn't go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle for this evening, the nunc, the mitis, the song of Solomon on page 55. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us reflect a little on the gospel today. Well, the gospel that we just read, the lesson for today. It is one that deals with authority and you know we we live in a society with different levels of authority the first level of authority is that of that we receive in in our homes that our parents ought to have authority over children and i want us to contemplate a little bit on the our national pledge on just a few words I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of my God and my country I will honor my parents my teachers my leaders and those in authority and I think somewhere along the line for many God has become a very convenient kind of God. I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of my God. But if that God is not a God that brings us into a better union with one another, if, if that God is only for personal service, how can I recognize my service to God when God that I know, or the God that is now, for many, is a God to serve them, right? And second part of, of the pledge talks about service to country. And many times we see Trinidad is not a real place, and, and every time we see those things, those people who are putting up Trinidad is not a real place, we are still in Trinidad. It may be, you know, to highlight the the inadequacy of our social services, the inadequacy sometimes of the, the government, the inadequacy of, of how things happen in Trinidad. But nevertheless, 
to say that it's not a real place is to, to, to say I, I don't have to serve this country in any meaningful way. So we already have, you know, a pledge that's being said, but it's being said by many who have no notion of God and who have no love for country. And I'm not trying to, to, to choose sides for country or, or, or understanding or, or, of anything like that. Because once we choose God and country, we have chosen service, plain and simple. We have chosen service not for myself, but for other people. I will honor the other part, to honor. Is there honor in Trinidad anymore? You know, in the, in the commandments, there are two groups of people to honor. We honor God, and then the second um, is to honor our parents. So to know God and to love our parents. God is still at the center of it all. But do we know what honor is? Can we say we have been honorable people? That we have sought to be honorable in our thoughts, in our works, in our actions, you know? Do we honor our parents by what we are doing, by what we are saying? Do You understand where I'm going with this, right? So, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to these things. I will honor my parents. And then after my parents, the next group of people that I spend the majority, especially children, because the pledge is said mainly by children, my teachers. Children spend a considerable amount of time every week with teachers. Are our children honoring their teachers? Now I'm going to say this. Teachers also must honor their students. In other words, teachers ought to respect their students as well. So students are asked to respect their teachers, but they must receive that respect as well. You know, sometimes we, we think, when we think about children, we don't think about respect coming down. You know, but that's what it is. That respect is a two-way street. So even if we say respect is, oh, is earned, it is still a two-way street. Do I respect my teachers and do my teachers respect me? And if my teachers don't respect me, do I really respect them? I might listen to them, but I don't respect them. I might do what they say, but I don't respect them. And as I get older and I, do, I no longer have to listen to them, the, res the disrespect then becomes wider and wider. And we can see in our country right now that a lot of disrespectful behavior is had on both sides of the of, of the coin you know so respect is not is not just given you know respect is earned both ways you know and and i, I must say you know kudos to all those teachers who show mutual respect mutual respect to their to their students you know, because a, a teacher is not above the law, you know. And there are some people who ought not to be in the teaching profession. As we, ha There are some people who are not supposed to be in any kind of, of profession that deals with other human beings, you, you, you know. That, that shouldn't, shouldn't be there. But we, we, we get back to honoring our parents, our teachers, and our leaders. In our parliament, people are called honorable. And I'm not sure, I, I, I know I've said this before, but I'm not sure if the word honorable should be used in parliament at all. They should change the word to something else, you know, to, you know, just saying Mr. or Sir or Ma'am or something like that, you know? Because the actions, again, the actions of many of our politicians, they're not honorable. They're not honorable. But yet they say, you know, honorable member. Perhaps it's to elicit the, 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 the attitude that they ought to have. But in many cases, you, you don't see it coming out. And if we are asking children to honor their leaders, 
shouldn't their, shouldn't our leaders re, you know um, show or lead by example of what this respect and honor what it looks like or what it entails you see having honor is not just wearing a, a suit or or speaking in the the best of the queen's english or the king's english sorry these days the king's english what is about our behavior towards the other we live in a country here we know about pekong and all the rest of it but i think many times it is taken to i'm having some internet issues my brothers and sisters so please please forgive me for <clears throat> for that right we're having some internet issues so and this is the first time i'm having internet issues in a long time so i again i apologize for that but when we think about what we are called to be as as people of god you know we are to respect or to to do things for other people in spite of what others do to us or or for us or anything like that right so what i'm getting at is that we have a disconnect in our country between what honor is what respect is on both sides we get angry and the first thing that many of our young people say you know i not take it no disrespect i not take it no disrespect but at the same time have they been respectful bullying people is not respect and we have become a, a, a society where we feel that we can bully somebody or, or other people so that we can get our own way we love our own way we like to make people feel bad we like to shame people you know and in doing so how have we how have we respected our neighbor how have we come to love them and respect them you know so we're respecting the person just the human person right and i know that these things are difficult but if the adults in our society fail to to be the exemplars of what we are what we want to see in our children then we will not get it right so when we talk about honoring our parents or leaders and those in authority who are the people in authority the people who are in authority are those who hold positions whether it be the police the fire officer the chief of defense staff the 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 the, the magistrate the judges the, the the pastors the priests the 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 pundit the imam they are all people who are in authority they may not be people in authority over you but they are people in authority over some other group of people and that's what it means you know that I would honor those who are in authority they don't have to be in authority over over us directly for us to to say that i can respect that person for who he or she may be or or their 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 call or their career or whatever it is so jesus talks about people who are in authority because they came and they asked him the question by whose authority are you doing these things and he asked them the question let me ask you this by whose authority you know so was john's baptism of heavenly origin of human origin in other words where did john get his authority did he get his authority from god or did he get his authority from himself man did it come from him and they they began to argue if we say it's from god he spoke with authority that that authority could only come from god it didn't come from from the man it comes from god so he he has authority in himself because jesus christ is god right so i i, I won't tell you where my authority comes from because you would not understand you would want to say right so again apologies jesus's authority flows from the father into him as the son and it is ratified in the holy spirit that Jesus is always with his father and the holy spirit is always in him but yet in in Jesus trying to explain his authority he doesn't disrespect the 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 people who try to trap him 
And then he goes on to say, you know, listen, you want to, let me, let me explain something to you. And he's explaining to them what is happening from his own people. Two sons are asked, you know, to do something for their father. The first son says, no, I'm not going. But later he goes. And then the other son said, yes, I'm going, but never goes. He says, which one did the will of the father? The one who said, you know, well, at first, I'm not doing it. The one who said, I'm not doing it at first. And he relates the people who are not doing it as those who are the tax collectors and the prostitutes. They have rejected God at first, but then... They went and did the work of God. They listened and they believed in John the Baptist. But those who say they believe in the word of God, they believe in the word of God, they hear the word of God, and then they say, you know what? Yeah, I hear in here, you know, but I ain't going. Although they said yes to the word of God at first. Although they said yes to God at first. So in our society, we have a lot of people who are saying yes to God, but then they are not doing the works of God. And we have some people who are saying no to God, and they are turning to God. They are turning to God. They are finding that God is the center of their life. We may not recognize it, but it is happening. Right? It is happening. And it's happening not, not in, the, in, in seeing, you know, visible holiness, whatever holiness looks like, because people have this view of holiness as well. It all comes back to, to you know, how we see things. Holiness, holiness looks a certain way. And God is saying, no, it, you can't see holiness like that because holiness is in the heart of the believer. It is in the heart of the believer. It is what you, it is your response to what God is doing in your life that shows holiness because God is working in everyone's life you know, in the life of the believer and the non-believer but it is the response when we come to that place of responding to God that then we can say yes this person is a child of God this person no matter how, how he or she may look how he or she may dress how he or she may speak this is a child of God because we can see or know them by their fruits. As Jesus would say, by their fruits, you would know them. So we don't always have to look a certain way to get something done. But what must remain at the core of our work is love. It is to be respectful. It is to have that sense of self, to know who we are. And not be threatened by people and what they may say. Right? There would always be disrespect in the world, but we ought not to engage in disrespecting others. So as we continue to, to, to look at what we are called to be and, 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 and do, to be children of God, we respond to God in love. We respond to God in love. I don't want to, to, to move on further because of the internet issues. So we will draw this to a close and hopefully next week, please God, uh, when I'm here again, I will have this internet issue resolved, but we will just end evening prayer by saying the Apostles' Creed and, and the rest of it. So thank you for joining me and for listening. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and the servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. The collect for today, proper eight. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so, grant us to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Call it for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly, sorry, call it for Sundays. O oh God of peace, you have taught us that in return, returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we give you thanks for bringing us to the close of this day. We pray that you would watch over us in the coming night. We pray for our students who have finished their examinations and at home. We pray that they will spend their time wisely. We pray for parents and for teachers who, are, who will be on vacation for a little while. Give them that sense of refreshment that they may return in September to continue the task that is before them. We pray for our local government elections that will take place next month. And we ask you, O Lord, to be gracious to your people, that we will always see the dignity in one another and so learn to live peaceably with one another in this land. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Enjoy the rest of this Sunday evening. Spend some time with your family and friends and continue to pray for me, your, your humble servant, and, and for my family. Um, see you all very, very soon. I love you very much, and God loves you more than I ever can. So have a wonderful evening, everyone. Peace and blessings to you all. <laughs>